Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Curious Village. In the last episode, our search for Ramon came to an end, but not in a way that we expected. We found the supposed kidnapper. He had Ramon in a bag and was running away with him. But after we lost sight of him, we returned to the manor to report what happened, and... We were greeted by none other than Ramon, who denies that what we saw even happened. At this point in the game, I was enjoying it for, uh, enough to continue playing, but like when that whole scene happened, I was like completely sold and like I wanted to finish this game like as soon as possible because I wanted to figure out the entire mystery of it all. I was absolutely fascinated and this is what sold me on like finishing this game and eventually sold me on the entire series. I hope it was like that for you too, because in this episode, we're gonna try and make sense of it all. By solving more puzzles, of course. No matter how I try, I just can't seem to find that special someone. Wow, priorities much? Tell me, Professor, what does an eligible bachelor like myself have to do to find a girl? I had an epiphany the other day. I think the reason I'm alone is because I can't solve this puzzle. Oh, how I've tried to solve it, but no matter how many nights I spend pondering it, the answer eludes me. Please help me, Professor. I don't want to spend the rest of my life talking to my stuffed animals. Uh, maybe girls don't like you because, uh, I don't know, you care more about puzzles than supposed murders and kidnappings? I don't know. Uh, puzzle number 12, make a rectangle. Also, it's weird that's only puzzle number 12. I don't know why they didn't give this to us sooner, but whatever. Oh wait, maybe they should have given it to us sooner, but now they're all like, yeah, I'm just gonna wait forever to let you talk to me because more important things are at hand. But now when even more important things are at hand, he's allowing us to solve puzzles. I don't get it. If you want to cut the piece of paper shown in diagram one into two pieces and then reassemble them to form a rectangle, all you have to do is to cut the paper shown in diagram two. However, in order to assemble the pieces as shown in diagram two, you need to flip one of the pieces over before putting them together. Where should you cut the paper if you want to turn the paper in Diagram 1 into a rectangle without flipping either of your two pieces? Hint number 1. The example shape that the puzzle shows you, Diagram 2, isn't at all indicative of the shape you're looking for. Try... think about a totally different shape you'd like to try. Hint number 2. The paper has a total of 15 squares. Since you're trying to assemble the rectangle, the only dimensions possible are 3 by 5 squares or 5 by 3 squares. Hint number 3. Look for a piece that could help you complete a rectangle that's 5 squares tall. Now that you know the height of your rectangle, you should be able to narrow down your options a little. The solution is that they want you to do... Huh, they want you to go like this? Really, is that it? Uh, okay then. There we go. All right then, I was like, I wanted to like outline the entire thing, but like you can't outline like the outer parts, so it was just like confusing, but I was like, oh, is it gonna accept it? That's right, now that you know the answer, the puzzle seems quite simple, doesn't it? Oh joy, I'm positively tingling with excitement. With that puzzle solved, I'm sure I'll find a bride in no time. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Sick and weird. Uh, let's head on out of here and talk to good old buddy Butler. Inspector Chelmy and Madame have already retired for the night. Ramon is likely off, on, off to the cafe. You've had a very hard day, Professor. Do try to get some rest. Good night, sir. So, we got nothing. Oh, hey, a puzzle. Flora Reinhold. Okay, then you just wanted to give us close-ups. I know they did this in the earlier part of the game, but I was like, oh, hey, I found a hidden puzzle, but no, it just felt like making me feel excited that I accomplished something. Speaking of hidden puzzles, though, I wonder if we really did just mistake what we saw in that street. No, I'm certain that it was Ramon. While when we saw him, there wasn't the slightest hint of his of life in him. He may have lost consciousness, but how odd that he should return healthy as can be an hour later. 
Stranger still is the fact that he seems to have no memory of what we saw happen to him. It's so peculiar. Plus Ramon wasn't even... Plus Ramon wasn't even the first. Lots of people seem to have had the same experience. Any other village would be in a panic over something like this, but St. Mysteer... Well, it's peculiar, that's all. There's something very peculiar about this whole town. Yes, in most places, no one would stand for this, but we've seen that St. Mysteer is anything but normal. Ramon's memory was added to your list of mysteries, and oh gray might throw us like a bubble in it, so now it's going all scratchy and stuff. Good morning, everybody. It's me and Beyond. Her, her, her. And wow, they usually don't put in the effort to have like alternate sprites, but apparently this character in this moment was just so incredibly important that they just had to put in the extra work for it. Yes, yes. Don't you worry. I'll let him know. Oh, hello there. There was a phone call for you. It was from an Inspector Chi something or other. From Inspector Chelmy. He just kept saying that it was urgent that you should meet him in Rhino Manor at once. He probably wants to talk about what happened yesterday. He may be so. We won't know until we get there, though. Come, Luke. Why do I feel like it's going to be a million hours before we get there? Because i got to examine every single person along the way and see how many puzzles we can find. Uh, there you are, Professor. Would you help a girl out? I've got something here I'd like you to look at. I made this darling sandwich for my special lunchbox, but the silly thing is too big. Oh, no. How horrible. You have a sandwich that's too big. It's like complaining about having, like... Being given two dollars when you only ask for one. Puzzle number 55, the odd sandwich. Using scraps left over from your breakfast, you managed to cobble together a rather oddly shaped sandwich. How many times must you cut the sandwich in order to make it fit neatly in the container? Hint number one. Have you thought of turning the sandwich to get a fresh perspective of the puzzle? It may sound rather ridiculous, but if you do it right, you might be surprised at how everything comes together. It reminds me of like this, like one of two times in my life where I actually read a book. Uh, I think it was a Clue book? Clue or, um, it must have been Clue. Um, it was a Clue book and you had to like solve mysteries within it and like it asked you questions and then the answers would be written at like the bottom of the book and it would uh, be written on the bottom of the book but upside down in case you didn't want to be spoiled on it. So you had to turn the book upside down if you want to read it. And I remember I was like in third grade and I was reading the book upside down to find the solution or whatever. And then the teacher saw me and was just like, hey, look, Jeffrey's reading a book upside down. That's so funny. And everyone was laughing and they thought it was hilarious. And I was like, no, wait, I'm just trying to read the thing that's upside down. It's actually in the book. And they were like, oh, OK, it's actually normal, whatever. And then I felt I actually felt bad because like I was like, I was happy that I made everyone in the class laugh. And then I was upset that like it like ruined it when I found out I was not trying to be funny and then I started reading upside down for real and I was like look I'm reading upside down now it's funny right guys oh <laughs> no one cared that was that's like the definition of kid night right there just like so pure and innocent hasn't been beaten down by the negativity of the world yet anyway puzzle number two or hit number two you won't have much success solving this puzzle if you are doing if all you're doing is looking for the image provided try rotating the sandwich 90 degrees to the left or right Hint number three, the solution is startlingly simple. Rotate the sandwich 90 degrees and cut it. The sections fit together perfectly like puzzle pieces. How convenient, cause it's like a puzzle. Uh, so just how many times we need to cut it? We don't even need to show how we would cut it? All right, that's kind of simple. And of course, the answer is always one. Luke, here's my answer. Every puzzle has an answer. Uh, that's right, this puzzle is a snap once you see the sandwich's pro protruding edges fit together. My solution would have been just to eat some of it, but oh well. Oh, Professor, you're just the cleverest! Thanks for helping me figure this out. A simple chair. Well, Luke is simple. We'll give it to him. <laughs> Alright, the item went to Luke, and odd sandwiches add to our index. I believe there is one hint coin, the guide said. Just one extra hint coin right here. Alrighty then, we're out of here. And hey, this guy's back again. Kkkkk, looks like your fellows are getting used to St. Mysterio. But stay sharp, 
Believe me, believe you me, you'll be buried in all the sorts of difficult puzzles before you s you could shout Starshavarshan. By now, you, I'm sure you've realized that you could retry the puzzles you failed to solve, eh? However, have you noticed how some puzzles just seem to vanish before you? Yes, yes, yes. Granny Riddleton, blah 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 blah. We know about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he has a puzzle for us to solve. On top of that, puzzle number fifty-six: the Lazy Guard. The local museum has an exhibit that spans nine rooms, as shown in the diagram below. The entrance to the complex is marked by A, and the exit is marked by B. The security guard on duty is a bit of a loafer and wants to walk while walk each room of the exhibit while turning as few times as possible. What is the fewest number of turns he can make while still visiting every room? As an example, the diagram below shows a course that involves six turns. Puzzle. God darn, why do I keep saying puzzle number one? Hint number one. First off, pay no mind to the sample path shown on the screen. There's an additional hint for you. Here's an additional hint for you. Now, nowhere within the problem does it say the guard can only enter each room once. It's okay for your path to move back and forth through a previous visited room. I can't read. Hint number two. Has the layout of the rooms and the sample path shown made you feel like all your turns need to be 90 degrees? This puzzle wants you to find the solution with the fewest number of turns. That means, this means that movement will always be in a straight line, but the angle of any given turn is up to you. Hint number three. There's no reason the guard should have to enter the exhibit at the angle parallel to the room. Consider a path that starts with the guard entering from a 45 degree angle. Don't forget, you can move through the same room twice. The solution? Again, we don't have to draw it out, thankfully. But hey, it isn't one this time, it's actually two! And that was a very crummily drawn two. That should do it. Another puzzle solved. Alright, that's right. If the security guard takes a path like the one shown above, he could finish his patrol of all nine rooms in just two turns. Since the example shown, the guard turning right angle, blah blah blah, yada yada yada, exposition, exposition. Kick, 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 kick. That's what I like to see. Seems the training I've been giving you has paid off. No, no, no. Need to thank me. Anywho, I'll be seeing you around. This guy's weird. All right, a uh, desk. Just a desk. All right, we'll give it to Luke. All right. There's one hint coin in the chimney. A uh, gift from Santa, possibly. Uh, why don't we go down over here? Luke, we must head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get on the manor. We're not allowed to go in lollygag, even though like. There was a point where a guy was like, you should lollygag, you should go in the- Yeah, this specific guy right here was like, you shouldn't just go follow the story or else you're gonna miss out on stuff. Hey, Professor, looking busy as usual. Uh, yup. Oh, I got a puzzle I just can't figure out on my own here. Can you let me your thinking cap? Uh, no. I could help you solve the puzzle, but Professor Layton must never remove his hat. Puzzle number 57. Cut which one? Below are six linked rings. They may look like a tangled mess, but there is a... But there is a one... Jesus Christ, I can't read. But there is one ring that, if cut away, would leave the remaining five rings connected end to end, to end in a long chain. Layton's hard. Hint number one. You, you can read the rest. Hint number one. It helps think about... Jesus Christ. Hint number one. It helps to think about how a chain is formed. To make a chain, you have one ring on each end. Each ring between these two end rings will be connected to the two rings. If any of the rings are connected to three or more other rings, there's no, there's no way a chain can form. Hint number two. Two rings make up the ends of the chain. Which two rings here look like they could be ends? Remember, end rings are each connected to one other ring. Hint number three. Two rings make up the ends of the chains. If you study the picture closely, you could see that the F ring, F ring, and eh, no comment, is only connected to one other ring, the E ring. Meanwhile, the other ring, the other end ring is ring A. So, which ring should you cut? The solution is get the D. Luke, here's my answer. That was kind of dangerous. I was trying to circle the answer, and it would have been dangerous if I accidentally clicked on the wrong one. Good job. If you examine the connections for each ring, the answer is surprisingly easy, isn't it? Ah, uh, so that's how you do it, yeah? I can finally rest at night. This thing was bugging me for days. Let me tell you something neat. And by neat, I mean really terrifying. The thing is that I've actually seen that old man with the sack coming out of the tower up north. 
I bet you dollars to donuts that he's the one behind all these disappearances. Why is no one reporting this stuff? Like, what the heck? This is such a stinking weird town. Pile of books. Uh, I feel like Leighton would like that. Uh, there's one hint coin right here, and how could, how much could we explore? We can't go over there, all right. Uh, could we go in here? We could go in here, but I doubt there's anything for us, because Luigi just likes making us mess up and stuff. I think they were just like, hey, are you using Granny Realton's Shack? You should really use Granny Realton's Shack. In case you don't use Granny Realton's Shack, I'm just going to recommend that you use Granny Realton's Shack one more time, because I th just think you should really use her shack. Oh, boy. Uh, actually, can we go into buildings? Uh, town hall open 10 a.m. shut at 5 p.m. Apparently, it's not even 10 a.m. yet. Uh, my question though, thank you. We want to go in here because there is a hidden puzzle somewhere in this room that is going to give us the final piece of puzzle, but I can't find it. What? How come you- Ugh, I don't understand like, why it needs to be so stinking specific for- Oh, whatever. Those candies look absolutely scrumptious, don't they? Luke, those candies just gave me a splendid idea for a puzzle. Have a listen to this. Puzzle number 32, candy jars. Oh, cute girl. Uh, you have 10 jars filled with 50 pieces of candy each. You then pour the candy into small bags and attempt to get half a jar in each bag. Now you have 20 bags of candy. What is the percentage of likelihood that there are an average of 25 pieces of candy in a single sack? <laughs> sack. Uh, hint number one. Each of the 10 jars holds 50 pieces of candy for a total of 500 pieces. You've taken this mountain of candy and divided it into 20 bags. Pretty straightforward so far, right? If you've made it this far, try reading the puzzle again carefully. Hint number two. Think carefully. What exactly is the puzzle asking you? That's right. You need to figure out the percentage likelihood that there will be an average of 25 pieces of candy per bag. That's different from simply asking the percentage likelihood of that a bag contains 25 pieces of candy, isn't it? Hint number three. This will this will pretty much give the answer away, but since you paid for a hint, so let's break it down, shall we? Ten jars with fifty pieces of with fifty pieces to a jar means you have five hundred pieces of a candy in total. If you divide those five hundred pieces into twenty bags, you get twenty-five pieces. Now think about what exactly that number signifies. The solution is one. That how the fruit was that a four? One hundred percent. Sixty-nine! Oh, it was worth it to wait for this puzzle after all. Very good. You had 50 pieces of candy in 10 jars, uh, giving you a total of 500 pieces of candy. You divide 500 pieces into 20 bags, so of course the, mat the mathematical average of this will be 25 pieces in a bag. There we are. Once you, dis once you discern what the question is saying, the problem is rather simple, isn't it? And finally... We obtained the final strange gizmo. That would have been very helpful to obtain back when we uh, were going through the town at night and there were new hint coins appearing everywhere. Because once you complete this contraption... Oh my god, it's a dog! I had no idea! There we are. The little robot dog is finally assembled. Now we just have to name the rascal. I have a feeling he'll come in quite handy. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you j to mark this occasion. Turn off your Nintendo DS once you restart the game. At the title screen, select bonuses and you should have a new challenge from me. Now I know you're excited about your present, but be sure to save before you restart your DS. Layton's challenges the inventor's house has been added to your map. And now we have to name the dog! Well, any fan of Video Games Awesome will know what I would want to name this dog because it has always been poor little Benny Pooh's lifelong dream to have a dog be able to bark a certain word. And in reference to that, we shall name this dog after that certain word. And that dog's name is...
Not sniff. Yeah, he's sniff. Because he sniffs. Because he's a dog. Jesus Christ, how can I... Apparently that... Oh, the stinking... I hate the weird looking hay. I don't like those. You know what? Just because of that weird looking hay, I'm going to go all capital with this. I say that's a capital idea. Her, her, her. His name is Snarf? Gizmos, look at the little doggy. So yeah, uh, leads. So it keeps a track record of how many times he's helped you out. So what this dog does exactly is that when you go to new areas on the map, he'll just randomly walk on screen and sniff around a certain part. He actually sniffs out hidden coins and hidden puzzles. It's really sinking cool. Um, apparently he didn't sniff out this hidden puzzle. What's that on the ground? It looks like a scrap of note paper. What it say? What's it say, Luke? Well, let's see here. Him. It's just terrible. Lady Violet has an awful case of the flu and hasn't left her bed for days. I'm no doctor, so I can't think of any way to help her. Oh, what to do? What to do? Lady Violet. Oh, this journal must be talking about Baron Reinhold's first wife. Oh, that's a finest wife. My heart is heavy as I write these words. The loss of his wife has completely crushed the boss. If only there was something I could do to help. He walks around looking like he's had the wind knocked out of him. And that's the end. Gosh, whoever wrote this must have cared an awful lot for the Baron and his family. Hmm. Alright then, and I assume you have a puzzle for us as well, buddy bud. Hey there, Professor, I bet you're here to solve my puzzle. I'm right, aren't I? Yeah, of course I'm right. I like this guy's voice. Uh, puzzle number 59, The Longest Path. Two boys are playing a game in which the goal is to take the longest route possible from point A to point B, as shown on the map below. The only rule is that no section of road can be traversed more than once. What course should they take in order to cover the longest distance possible between point A and point B? Hint number one. When solving this puzzle, many people think they have the answer on their first try, only to discover otherwise. Try to walk as much of the road as possible on your way to point B. Hint number two. The area that the boys are walking is a square is a square that's more or less composed of long and short sections of the road. After you've charted out your course and think you have the answer, take a quick look to see how much road you have untouched. Hint number three. Starting out from point A, head as far to the left as possible. When you reach the left border, start heading south. The longest path you can draw will form an S-shaped line through the middle of the town. The solution needs to be drawn. Alright then. So we're just gonna go from here. Uh, hello. Get in there. Thank you. And... Whoa, what? Bleh. Get in there. Can I get in there? Uh, that better count, otherwise I'm gonna be real stinking angry. That should do it. Alright, Smiling Layton, save the day. Another puzzle solved. Alright, what do we got here? Nice work. Speaking of leisurely strolls, have you been outside today? Jeez, the game throwing shade that you're playing this game too long. If it's sunny, why not go for a nice walk? It's like the original version of like all those Wii U games or the Switch games or the 3DS games are like, why not take a break? You've been playing for like a half an hour. That's way too much time to play a game. Bane up job there, Professor. Even that puzzle didn't phase you, huh? Of course not, you're a pro. Yep, you're a real piece of work, prof. You know that? Of course you do, you're a scholar after all. And we got another painting scrap. Uh, no, we're not gonna examine. I doubt we have all the painting scraps yet. Uh, what we're gonna do is, I guess, head on to the manor. Uh, nothing here. Ooh, a hidden puzzle, though. Good thing I examined it. Huh? Look, there's a hole in that boat there. Oh, Professor, that reminds me. Have you ever heard about the one about the sinking ship? Jeez, uh, you think you would want to patch up the stinking sinking boat, but apparently not. Hint, uh, puzzle number 13, an early one, sinking ship. My ship sails in the morning. 
And wow, apparently this one was available from very early on, and I just now found it. SOS! 15 people are trapped aboard a ship that's going to sink in exactly 20 minutes! Their only chance of survival is if the five-person life raft stood on their vessel. To make matters worse, the waters around the ship are teeming with man-eating sharks. So swimming to safety is out of the question. A road trip to the nearest island and back. A round trip to the nearest island and back to the boat takes nine minutes on the raft. How many people will live to see dry land? Jeez, what a gruesome puzzle. Hint number one. In 20 minutes, the raft can make two round trips to the boat. Where is the boat located after two trips to the island and back? Hint number two. After two round trips, the raft returns to the ship. At this point, 18 minutes have passed, but since the ship hasn't sunk yet, there's no reason the raft can't pick up a few more passengers. That's right, the raft has the time to pick up three loads of passengers. Hint number three. You know that the raft has to pick... You know that the raft has time to pick up three loads of passengers, so you're probably raring to answer. Just be careful, as there is one more trick to this puzzle that you might not have picked up on. It's sad to say, but not every passenger will make it off that ship alive. The solution is that 13 people will see the light of day. Should do it. That should do it. There we go. I love smiling late. No, no, I'm just gonna keep on mentioning it. 1775. That was a good year. I don't know. Nicely done. A moment of silence for those two who didn't make it back, please. Jeez, so gruesome. Wow, great answer, Professor. It took me five times as long to get that one. Yeah, because you're Luke. Alright, then sinking ship was added. And we're just gonna ignore the fact that the boat is sinking. Uh, I guess that's it, unless there's another hidden puzzle here that I don't know about. Yeah. And what the fruit are you doing out here? Well, if it isn't Claudia out and about, uh, and that reminds me of a puzzle. Give it a try, my boy. What the fruit? Like, why can't a cat just exist without you thinking of a stinking puzzle? Uh, puzzle number 60, Wayne Cats. There are three different colors of plush cats before you. The color of a cat den denotes its weight. Examples 1 and 2 show their relative weights. You have three red cats and four black cats loaded on one side of the scale. On the other side of the scale, there are four white cats and one black cat. Given the setup, will the scale tip left, tip right, or stay level? Tap your answer on the touchscreen. Hint number 1. Use the results of examples 1 and 2 to simplify the relative weight of the groups of cats being weighed. Look closely to find an accurate equivalent. Hint number two. Example two shows that two black cats and a white cat equals three red cats. Swap out the red cats for the black and white ones and see what you can figure out now. Hint number three. Example one shows that five black cats equal the weight of four white cats. If you substitute the four white cats on the right side of the scale for four black cats, you end up with six black cats. Put that together with what you learned from hint two and you're very close to the answer. These hints are, like, they can be overwhelming just because they repeat the same word over and over and over and over. Uh, but the solution is that the scale will tip to the left. To the left, to the left. Well, here's my guess. Professor, I've sold it. Hurrah! Excellent. If you replace the red and white cats with black ones, then the puzzle becomes much simpler. Once you realize how you need to look at things. It's not a terribly difficult problem now, is it? We got a painting scrap, whoop de doo And Wayne Katz was added. And that seems to be it. Uh, there should be a hint coin around here though, it said. The guy told me so, there would be a hint coin, there we go. So Snarf doesn't sniff out every single hint coin for you, unfortunately. He just sniffs out some of them. And, I don't know, I guess you still need to figure out on your own, but like, just every now and again he'll sniff out a hint coin or a hidden puzzle. Alright then, but it's still good that we finally have him. And I think we're gonna end the episode off right here. I know we didn't get much story progress done, but we finally got that stinking gizmo piece I've been trying to get for like the past 20 stinking episodes, so hopefully that's good enough for you. Next time on Professor Layton and the Curious Village, we will enter Reinhold Manor and speak with Inspector Chelmy. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.